Hey KAO team and family, this is Mr. Thompson. Welcome to our second remote learning lesson. Um, today we're going to be working on citing evidence to make inferences. So our standard for today is the learner will be able to use textual evidence along with background knowledge to make reasonable inferences about a text. It's really important for you guys to learn how to make inferences because it's going to, it's going to make you a better reader and it's going to also just help you kind of unpack and work through a lot of the complex texts we're going to be working on for the rest of the school year. So today, what you're going to need is access to Google Classroom, along with a computer, tablet, or smartphone that you can use to access the internet. So what I want you guys to do is on Google Classroom, I want you to pull up the document that goes along with this lesson for today. That's where you're going to be doing all of your work. So I'll give you guys a couple minutes to do that. Why don't you pause the video right now and get all set up. So, today, key points, okay? The things that we really, really need to know for this lesson. Some information in the text is not always gonna be explicitly stated, okay? Good authors don't make everything abundantly clear all the time. So, in order to really understand what they're trying to tell us, we have to kind of be detectives and use clues and look through the text and do a full and comprehensive reading. Readers often have to add up clues to make an inference about the text. As good readers and writers, we must cite textual evidence to support inferences drawn from the text. And when readers make an inference, they combine what they know with direct evidence from the text to figure out what is not being explicitly said. So if we look at this, this little um, puzzle piece right here, this really kind of explains to you perfectly how to make an inference. In order to make an inference, what we have to do is take what we already know about life in general, okay? This could be called prior knowledge or could be called background knowledge. And we add it to what the text says, the direct evidence that the author is giving us. When we add those two pieces, what we come up with is an inference. Okay, key vocab for today, okay? An inference is just a logical guess. Analyze means to examine individual parts to see how they all work together. And explicitly means direct information that lets you know what happened and why. Okay, so for my model today, what I want you guys to do, read along silently in your head while I read out loud. Every day after work, Paul took his muddy boots off on the steps to the front porch. Alice would have a fit if the boots made it so far as to welcome them. He took them off his dust he then took off his dusty overalls and threw them into a plastic garbage bag. Alice left a new garbage bag tied to the porch railing for him every morning. On his way in the house, he dropped the garbage bag off at the washing machine and went straight up the stairs to the shower as he was instructed. He would eat dinner with her after he was presentable, as Alice had often said. Now, what I want you guys to, to take note of is this is going to be the graphic organizer that we're going to use to put all of our ideas in today, and we're also going to use this to find our inferences. So, um, I've read the paragraph once. I'm going to always do a second read. So here we go. Every day after work, Paul took his muddy boots off on the steps of the front porch. Alice would have a fit if the boots made it so far as a welcome mat. He then took off his dusty overalls and threw them into a plastic garbage bag. Alice left a new garbage bag tied to the porch railing for him every morning. On his way in the house, he dropped the garbage bag off at the washing machine and went straight up the stairs to the shower as he was instructed. He would eat dinner with her after he was presentable, as Alice had often said. So after I've read the paragraph twice, I'm going to annotate it for important facts and details that stand out. Look for repetition in the words or ideas that the author is using. Um, so like I keep seeing that the author keeps mentioning dirty clothes and it feels like Paul must follow a strict set of rules when entering the house. His wife or mother, Alice, seems to demand that he follow all these rules. She must want to keep a clean house. I wonder what kind of relationship they have. I also wonder what Paul does for a living. Maybe if I go back and do a third read, those inferences will be a little bit more clear. So let's do a third read together. 
Every day after work, Paul took off his muddy boots on the steps of the front porch. Alice would have a fit if the boots made it so far as the welcome mat. He then took off his dusty overalls and threw them into a plastic garbage bag. Alice left a new garbage bag tied to the porch railing for him every morning. On his way in the house, he dropped the garbage bag off at the washing machine and went straight up the stairs to the shower as he was instructed. He would eat dinner with her after he was presentable, as Alice had often said. So, what did I annotate? What did I pull out? What did I, what did I think were the most important pieces of information? Paul took off his muddy boots. Alice would have a fit. Paul took off his dusty overalls. Alice left a new garbage bag. He dropped the garbage bag off on the washing machine, off on the washing machine, and went straight up the stairs as he was instructed. Um, he would eat dinner with her after he was presentable. So notice one one issue that a lot of seventh graders have when they're annotating is you know we just have a small paragraph here. If I annotate everything then the purpose of annotation is lost, right? I want to annotate things that stand out so I can remember them when I go back to try to find my inference. So you're not, under, you're not annotating complete sentences. All you're doing is words or phrases that really stand out to you, okay? So the textual evidence that I pulled, Paul took off his muddy boots, he took off his dusty overalls, he went straight up to the shower, okay? This is the direct evidence from the text. Now I'm gonna add this to my background or prior knowledge. Paul must go through a very set routine when he gets home because he is so dirty. I know when people work jobs outside, their clothes get really, really dirty, okay? So I'm taking this evidence, I'm adding it to my background knowledge, and then I come up with this inference. Paul's job is hands-on and requires him to work outside, okay? Now, it's important to note the author never says Paul never explicitly says that Paul works in a job that requires him to be outside and use his hands. But based on all the evidence the author gave us, we can accurately make this inference. Okay? Let's look at another inference I was able to make from this passage. Alice would have a fit. He went to the shower as instructed, presentable. These are all pieces of textual evidence that I pulled from the paragraph. My background knowledge is that I know that when someone has a fit, they are mad. I also know that generally adults who require other adults to do things could be considered bossy. So the inference I'm gonna make is Alice is very controlling over Paul, okay? Um, remember, when we're making inferences, it's important to use background knowledge and only the evidence that is presented to you. Notice, I did not make the inference that Paul and Alice are husband or wife. Paul could still live with his mother, and Alice's behavior could be attributed to that of an overbearing mother and not necessarily a wife. So because the evidence doesn't point to that, I can't make that inference. Okay, your turn. Guided practice. All right. Remember that when we, when we make an inference, we add textual evidence to background knowledge. After adding evidence to what you already know about life, we are ready to make an inference. Remember, when you make an inference, you have to not only think about what happened, but ask yourself, how would I feel if that happened to me? First read the text twice, then annotate the text. When you're annotating, highlight any words or phrases that stand out, not entire sentences. Also focus on words that could be repeated throughout the, the passage. And next, fill in the graphic organizer that an and answer the two multiple choice questions that follow. So I want you guys, in your document, you're going to do two reads. You're going to fill in the um, graphic organizer. Then you're going to answer these S back aligned multiple choice questions. The first question, a student makes the following inference about Tommy's mom. She has an explosive temper. Which sentence from the text best supports this inference? Next one is, based on the text, which of the following statements explains why Tommy left the house? So, I'm gonna give you guys uh, a couple minutes, pause the video right now, and then we'll review the answers. All right, so, guided practice answers. I'm just gonna do uh, one read of the text for right now because I know that you guys have already read it multiple times. So, 
Tommy, Mom called as she walked in the front door. Tommy, she continued shouting, I sure could use some help with these groceries. There was still no reply. Mom walked into the kitchen to put the grocery bags down on the counter when she noticed shattered glass from the picture window all over the living room floor and a baseball not far from there. I'm going to kill you, Tommy, Mom yelled to herself as she realized that Tommy's shoes were gone. Okay? So the textual evidence that I felt was important there was shattered glass on the floor, there was a baseball on the floor. Mom shouted, I'm going to kill Tommy, and Tommy's shoes were gone. Background knowledge, or prior knowledge. I know that kids get scared when they cause accidents in the house. I also know that baseballs can break glass. The inference I'm going to make is Tommy broke a window with his baseball and ran away not to get in trouble. Moving on to the multiple choice questions. A student makes the following inference about Tommy's mom. She has an explosive temper. Which sentence from the text best supports this inference? The answer to this one is going to be C. I'm going to kill you, Tommy, mom yelled to herself as she realized that Tommy's shoes were gone. Okay? So, this dialogue here, I'm going to kill you, Tommy, we definitely could use that to make the inference that Tommy's mom has an explosive temper. For the next multiple choice question, based on the text, which of the following statements explains why Tommy left the house? The correct answer is going to be C. Tommy was scared of his mother's reaction to him breaking a window, so he left the house to escape her punishment. I hope you guys feel good about that lesson. I certainly do. And um, thank you for um, sitting through another remote learning lesson. Um, any questions, comments, please don't hesitate to email, reach out, um, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.